really need to read it, right? Um, but you are now. This is the, the third one, right? This is a, in this kind of organization, we call them Indonesia Press Company, Indonesia Press, Indonesia Press, and it's what they send us. Um, so, in this kind of companies, you go explain, explain, explain. Once you don't have data to back in those things, you get thrown out in. Um, you get thrown out, right? So, that's the very first thing I want us to think about. Now, the second thing I want us to think about is is your company really data driven? I mean, you don't really have to answer the question. Just reflect on your analysis, right? Um, is your company really data driven, or you're just turning out the report, or are you just using data to support your compliance, right? So, you want to make this decision, and then your manager just calls you. Okay, can you pull out all the data we have on XXS man? I want to fire the manager. Can you just show me that this guy is not performing so I can really do what I want to do, right? So, a lot of companies, even though you have all these fantastic dashboards and reports and everything, the main question is still are you really issue only driven by data in your organization, or are you just using data? To support your buyers. I mean, just keep this at the back of our mind. So you see a company where you have so many reports. What exactly are we doing with this? I mean, you can't tell. But I mean, it's a, it makes us look good, good, which is nice. Okay. Now, this is the second thing I want us to know. The third thing that we need to see is: Have you ever been in a situation where um, you run, let's say, campaign ads, um, and then you see the marketing manager say? Oh, we had 450 customer conversions from this ad or from this campaign, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. the sales manager is saying, no, no, just chill, right? We just have uh, 320. Now, the question is, who is right and who is wrong? You really can't say. The question you're supposed to ask is, how exactly is customer conversion defined? For a marketing manager, customer conversion is around this ad, these are the number of people that came to the website, which you probably click on buy or something. For a sales manager or for the business day, conversion is the physical product that leaves the store and then we get money or we get value for it, right? Now, if we don't properly define um, all of this, these things in our company will continue to lead to this snags, right? And this is why it's really important to sort of like share with you what exactly our data source companies doing and what stands them apart, and which is essentially uh, what I'm going to be showing, right? What do data trust companies do differently? For a lot of organizations, data really shouldn't start with um, the data itself, or building this complexity of the pipelines, building machine learning models, and so on and so forth. Let's start from the scratch, right? What exactly do we want to do with data? And that is essentially um, data strategy. Right, so I've talked about data strategy. Maybe I've listed the phrase like five times or ten times in the last three minutes or five minutes. Now it's good to really dive into what exactly is this data strategy that we're talking about. So, think of data strategy as a long term plan that defines three things the people, the process, and the technology. And the rules that, require that is required to manage an organization's information assets, in other words, data, all right, um, in order to accomplish the organizational goals. You can see the key phrases. We are managing three things. A lot of companies today focus on one of these, and that is why you see that you are not really doing as ex what you are expected to be doing, right? Um, either you're focusing too much on the technology or um, you want to transform your company, and the next thing is, oh, let's go hire this ex Facebook or ex Microsoft guy to come head the team. We don't have the technology, and at the end of the day, you bring in these people, they see what you have on ground, they get frustrated, and then they leave, right? So it's, uh, it's a holistic view. Three people, the process, and the technology. The three things have to go hand in hand for you to see you have an effective data strategy. And then you have a strategy that can that can win. 
um, of course. And then the last thing which I also here um, highlighted here is all of these things must be coming together to accomplish a particular goal. In other words, your data strategy must be tied to your business strategy or a business goal. I'm going to talk about this as we move on. So I really spoke about um, this already. Three things, people, process, technology. So the next few slides, we're just going to dive into what this is about. Now, let's start with the technology. Um, when you're crafting a very good or a good um, data strategy, one of the key things you need to understand is uh, what is the technology that is um, um, the technology implementation for your data storage, data processing, and also analytics, right? What do you have on ground um, to support? Do we just have Excel sheets um, everywhere? right, where there is no single version of truth, right, everybody have their own um, version, there is no coherence in terms of um, what we're doing with our data. Now, the other thing is, um, what are we doing, what kind of systems is going to power our data-driven transformation, are these legacy, um, legacy systems? I walked into a company that said they are data-driven and they are still using um, Office maybe 2006 or 2007. I mean, right, it's really, um, <laughs> you can't say you, you're hiring good data professionals and you're using legacy systems. You're still using um, systems that even the OEMs that built them don't, no longer support, right? You really cannot be taking that seriously. Um, the third thing is about data security and compliance. I think that has been said so many times. Um, in, this, um, in the last two days or in, in, in data first already. Data security and compliance is really going to, of course, it is very key, right? But in, in Africa, maybe we've really not um, caught on with that wave, right? But going forward with all the regulatory and um, um, all the regulations, the compliance, putting into um, what tools or what technology are we using um, to manage data security compliance is go going to be very key. Let me speak to data silos. Um, data silos is just us having, uh, would I say techno silo technology within the team. So you find a scenario where in the HR department, we have our own version of the truth. We have the data that supports whatever initiative we are driving. In the marketing team, is different. In the sales team, is different. We are using our CRMs, ERPs, and all the likes. Um, now, all of these data points are not talking to each other, right? That is why you have that slide where the marketing manager would always argue with the sales manager. I've sat in meetings like this that almost end up in, in, in getting physical, right? Because everybody have their own version of the truth, which is data silos. And for us to have a clear data driven strategy, for us to be able to say, we want to lead our organization with data, we have to have a single version of truth, which is eliminating data silos. So we have to have a very concise, say, data warehouse or something that is pulling our data, I mean, in one use, that's about the technology. And of course, um, a tool to, for data monitoring and management. For the interest of time, I'll just move on. Now let's look at the process. So we've, we have the right technology, right? But we have the process in place to make um, all of this come together. Now, what is our process for data collection, storage, and even retrieval? How do we collect our data? right, the data we want to use, right, how do we go through this collection process? How do we manage it? How do we store it? How do we retrieve it? Do we even have um, any mechanism for retiring data, right? So you, you are not going to tell me that you want to do an analysis or maybe a market analysis um, to see who is going to buy a product and who is not going to buy a product. And you're using the same data that you've collected since, say, 2003, or 2004 to feed into um, your models, right? Those, those kind of data, you have to have a retention policy in your organization to say, okay, say after five years or after 10 years, this data may no longer be relevant, 
right, for us to make some certain decisions. So there has to be some policies or some processes in place to guide that. The second one is how does data permit the organization? I just spoke about this when I was talking about um, data silos. Do we have an end-to-end -end flow? Um, do we track the data lineage? Who has access to what's data? And what is the process to track um, what they do with that data? I talk about data governance and um, compliance. There are some organizations today that once you join in, because they want to
credit card information of um, our customer because we are trying to analyze um, how uh, maybe money, um, people are spending money and receiving money in our country. You don't want people to have sensitive information about people's account balances and so on and so forth, right? So, and that is very key. Um, you also understand that in some, okay, I don't want to shoot any shots. I wanted to say in some banks in Nigeria, I mean, but okay, let, let's not go there. How will the business leverage the data? Very important um, as well. So we need to put that into consideration. So why is data strategy important? I've spoken about it. Um, data strategy have been going on and on for the last, say, 15 minutes. But why is this important? It helps us to first solve um, data management challenges. Everything I talked, um, I spoke to about data silos, right? I know companies that are investing billions of Naira today because they, they, don't, they, just, they just can't make sense. They have data, right? But the data is scattered everywhere. Um, how do we build a single version of truth, right? That is where um, sort of data strategy comes in, right? So it helps with uh, data management challenges, things around data silo, data access, um, unifying data across the organization. It also helps to improve customer experience and loyalty. I spoke to the issue around um, when a customer reach out to your business, right? Um, they should have the same experience across board, irrespective of whatever channel they connect with you with, whether it's a digital channel or or a physical store. Um, one of the problems we have in Nigeria, um, or maybe in Africa, is does it not ever get tiring that you want to do the driver's license, you have to go for capturing. You want to do, um, what is it called, international passport. You do the same, the same information that you are giving to several agencies of government. What's, stop, what's stopping us from just unifying this data and just um, collecting only what we need, right? And this is essentially what is going on. You are interacting with some brands today. I walk into your store, I'll give you all my information, right, for you to capture it. I walk into another branch tomorrow, or I reach out to you online, and you're asking me the same questions. It really gets frustrating. And that's why you have multiple versions of truth or multiple copies, copies of the same uh, of the same data. So it helps you to improve efficiency and productivity, right? You really, uh, this really cannot be overemphasized, right? Because um, when you have, your life is a whole lot easier. When you have a clear strategy, you have the right data, you have the right people and the right team. You spend less hours um, doing mundane tasks and just um, cleaning. Um, a friend of mine, I was just talking to him yesterday. He got um, a sort of like a gig from one US firm um, to just clean data because their data is dirty and it's scattered everywhere. It's not unified. He said he charged them $10,000 just to help them clean data and just unify it because it's, 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 it's a lot of problem. And um, companies are spending huge amounts of money to solve this. They're investing in a lot of technology to do it, to do this right, but what if we can get this right from 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 scratch? Um, also, it helps align um, data management efforts with business objectives. I think I um, I spoke about this um, um, before. Data strategy doesn't stand alone. It ties to a business strategy. If you want to improve return on investment um, in three years or in four years, then you have to put this. Um, you have to start from now, and then you have to track how exactly do we achieve that using um, the data that we have. Um, it helps you to support your regulatory compliance um, also, right? Um, and when all of these um, data protection policies, when it really hits um, Nigeria, a lot of, or in, or in Africa, a lot of people are going to be um, in, in, in trouble, right? So what if we can just get it right from now, okay? Um, so it helps to create an organizational-wide data culture. I spoke about data literacy. People in your organization should be able to use data effectively, even beyond 
um, the data team in itself. It helps you to attain analytical maturity. Most organizations today, we are still doing the old descriptive diagnostic data. We want to move into doing the predictive analytics and so on and so forth. So we can start from where we are right now, understand the gap we um, that is there, and how do we build on this, right, um, going forward. So it helps you do all of that from now. Then finally, it helps you build future-proof applications like machine learning and generative AI. A lot of us are caught in the bog of generative AI. We want to build models and all. Is it the same Excel sheet that we are, <laughs> that we are using everywhere that, that we are going to use for this thing? So we need to build this practice. It's, it's not bad starting from wherever we are. Right, but there needs to be a clear roadmap to say, okay, this is what we want to be doing in this business, say, in the next five years or in the next three years, and how do we start uh, from now? Okay, so what are the elements of an effective data strategy framework? It has to integrate with business strategy, right? There must be clearly defined organizational roles. Uh, who is doing what uh, in the organization? Um, it has to be clearly defined. Okay, um, so you have to have a well-defined architecture and also data management. I've spoken to this already. Um, I'll just go through, if you can take a picture, I can also share this slide on what are the eight steps to create um, a robust data strategy. You have to identify the key stakeholders. Key stakeholders are your customers, your C-suite executive, the data team, and whoever is going to use your data. You have to define a clear goal um, what are we trying to achieve? Are we trying to improve customer ROI? Um, are we trying to improve um, revenue? Are we trying to reduce costs? What is the goal, right? So audit existing um, technology system, divine KPIs, um, put your data governance um, in place. Your organizational structure is also important. You have to implement the plan, and then you have to continuously review that process. So finally, my last slide is data should no longer be treated as a cost center. Rather, it is a strategic business asset that must drive our what business imperative. So having a robust data strategy is what will put businesses in control. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thanks so much, Fatai. Yeah? So how do people reach you questions? As like, since the time is up, how do they reach you with questions? So this is, um, this is my Twitter, or my handle on, on, on Twitter, on X is Fatai underscore pi. So Fatai underscore PY, and I'm also available on LinkedIn, Fatai Sani. All right, so please, if you have questions, just um, drop them for Fatai virtually, and you'll respond to it. Thank you so much.